It was considered a success this past week. Cars were lined up with people needing help to avoid eviction. There were landlords in that line as well, an indication of how many people in various circumstances are impacted by this pandemic. Harris County Precinct 1 Constable Allen Rosen spearheaded this effort, along with several other partners. Constable Rosen joins me now this morning. Good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining me. Tell me about this eviction assistance program. How did this come about? Cabral, thank you for having me on. This came about when CNN did a national story following one of my officers doing evictions. And uh, the overwhelming uh, feeling amongst people all over the world was sadness. And they saw these people being put out of their homes. And it's just part of my job. It's the worst part of my job, I might add. But we have to do it. I have a, we have to do, I have a fiduciary duty to do it. But we decided after we started getting uh, people from all over the world wanting to donate money to help these two individuals that we had to evict, we decided that we would step up and start a GoFundMe account as well. Our initial goal was $25,000, and within five or six days, we had raised almost $250,000. Wow. So we really, it was incredible. I mean, if you really don't know that the human spirit is alive and people still care during this pandemic, this is proof that they do care and, and they care about their fellow human being. And uh, it was incredible. What kind of help was being provided to the folk who came out? Well, um, they were getting legal advice. We partnered with uh, Lone Star Legal Aid, South Texas College of Law, uh, the Houston Apartment Association, and we all came out. And, and the, the beauty of this is that we decided to do it in the most impacted area of Harris County. So we looked by zip code to see what area had been most impacted by evictions. And it was 77088, 77091, and 77092. So we decided to take all this legal advice and all these resources out to the people as opposed to having them come in. And so we set up a pop-up uh, shop. We had four lines of lawyers waiting for people. We socially, properly socially distanced, and people were able to come through and get the necessary legal advice in order to stay in their homes. And I noticed uh, that the, I noticed there were landlords in that line as well. That's kind of unusual. But the people, landlords have mortgages sometimes to pay as well. If they don't get paid, they have problems too. So that was interesting to see that a lot of people are impacted by this. Yeah, and I wanted to make sure that it was fair and balanced. And, you know, we don't want to just represent and help tenants. We wanted to help landlords. I know, just as you said, they're suffering just like the tenants are. They have to make their bank notes on their properties. They have, uh, you know, obligations as well, financial obligations as well. And so we wanted to help both sides, and we're going to continue to help both sides. Uh, and we had landlords show up that had questions. We had uh, about 125 cars. We spent about, on average, about 20 minutes per car. And when the people left, they came scared. They came upset. They came frustrated because of all the bureaucratic paperwork you have to do. And I am very hopeful, and I did see a lot of people felt relieved mm -hmm. when they left. Because and they felt like they had a plan, and they, they were given proper legal advice. And based upon the success of this past week, what are you planning on doing from this? More of these planned? Yes, we're going to go to the second most impacted area, and we're going to do a pop-up shop there. I mean, it was a huge success. Um, you know, people at South Texas College of Law and Lone Star Legal Aid, even our the members of our department that participated were inspired. And it, you, you just got a feeling of desperation of people when they showed up, and they left with a plan. They left. And, you know, in order to qualify for the CDC uh, guidelines to not be evicted, you have certain criteria you have to meet. Mm -hmm. And if you don't do it properly and plead it properly, you don't get the protection. And what I saw initially was that people were going to rely on the fact that the CDC moratorium went into place and they didn't have to do anything. And that's not true. So, and so rather than just... Rather than just throw this $250,000 into the city county fund, which is $60 million, which would have been a pebble in the ocean, I wanted to be more impactful. I wanted to help more people, and I wanted to do everything we can to, to help as many people as we possibly could. And this was the vehicle that we chose to do that. 30 seconds, uh, Constable, best place, way for people to find out about the next event? You can go to our website at www.pct1constable.net. Look on our social media platforms. I want you to come out. There's plenty of advice. We made sure people had water. 
Right. We made sure they put the distance. I'll put it on my website as well, sir. Thank you so much for what you've done. Continued success with these future Thank assistance you, programs. Thank you.